Welcome to UO Today. I'm Barbara Altman, Director of the Oregon Humanities Center. Today we're on location in the Coita and Donald Barker Gallery of the Jordan Schnitzer Museum of Art. The current exhibit is Scherz as Schie, Amplified Moments, 1993 to 2008. We have two guests, the artist himself, Scherz as Schie, and Dan Mills, the exhibit's curator. Shietza Shie is the Paul L. and Phyllis Wattis Professor in Art at Stanford University. He earned his Bachelor of Architecture degree in Beijing. The violent Tiananmen Square crackdown in 1989 compelled him to shift his energies towards painting. After emigrating from China in 1992, Shietza earned his MFA at the University of North Texas. His works are in many national and international museum collections, as well as several distinguished private collections. Dan Mills is the director of the Bates College Museum of Art in Lewiston, Maine. Prior to Bates, he was the director of the Samic Art Gallery at Bucknell University. Amplified Moments, this show, was organized at the Samic Gallery by Mills. Besides the U of O, the exhibit has traveled to the Knoxville Museum of Art and the Bates College Museum of Art as well. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here. Uh, thank you, Barbara. We love doing thank shows you. on site, and it's an honor to catch you while you're here. So great to be here. We're going to start with Dan. I have a question for Dan, but please feel free to jump in on each other's answers, OK? I'm okay. sure you're, you're used to working together by now. <laughs> Dan, how did you discover Schautz's work, and what led to this exhibit? Oh, well, well Barbara, that's an interesting question. As we, we, were, uh, we both were faculty and, and staff at uh, Bucknell University, and um, for from 2001 to 2008, shared a building and had studios next to each other. So initially, it was as, as artists who worked near one another, and a friendship developed, and familiarity with each other's work, and having somebody who uh, one respects be able to come in and look at work and the process of making it and discuss uh, was really how, how, how it started. And eventually, we. Uh, worked on some large curatorial exhibitions and projects together, focusing on uh, contemporary Chinese art and also U.S. and Chinese art, and uh, traveled in China and elsewhere. So that was really the, the seed. Um, and I'd like to think that as a, the curator, the fact that I had this, this period of time with really in, intimate access to much of the work that's in this exhibition while it was being made, uh, seeing things in, in the middle, in the beginning, at the end, um, helped uh, me provide some insight that is useful for people who, who see the exhibition. Was it a change in your working relationship to go from being fellow artists and colleagues engaged in the same kind of work to being artist featured and curator of that work? <laughs> Well, first of all, I, um, I know that Dan is a, a noted curator, and I have um, a lot of respect for the projects that he has done so far. Uh, but um, when we were, next, we were neighbors, uh, our studio was so next to each, to each other, um, I was just in my mind, you were just, first of all, you were an artist friend. Mm -hmm. And so uh, there was no pressure when he knocked on my door and come in to chat with me. And uh, I always love to show him work in progress and uh, talk about ideas. Uh, so it's a, it's a very um, intimate kind of relationship. Um, and I, now I, thinking back about it, you know, a curator who organizes, organizes a show may do one or two studio visits with an art, artist. But for Dan, he, has, he, he was in my studio numerous times. And so he is uh, most knowledgeable about my working process, the development of different series of work, and uh, you know, he knows about my hesitation, my worries, uh, my struggle, and I think uh, I'm so glad that uh, he's the one putting the show together for me. Thanks. <laughs> it's my pleasure. You mm -hmm. talked about your series of works, and one of the things I was struck with listening to a lecture that you've given recently in connection with this show mm -hmm. is that you say that you, your own artwork does not develop in a linear fashion. There's mm -hmm. not the earlier works and the later works. You revisit the same big themes over mm -hmm. a span of several decades now, right? Are you still actively working on this kind of image that uh, focuses on books, newspapers? Mm -hmm. 
Yes, I still continue uh, those series. And uh, here's the way I tend to walk. Um, I would uh, have an idea and then uh, start a series of work. I would work very intensively on it for a while. Mm -hmm. It could be like several months or a year or two. And, but at the same time, um, I may have new ideas. Uh, and I will start another group. Um, and so uh, after a while, then I'll go revisit an older theme and uh, take it further, maybe expand it or uh, you know, make additions to it. Um, and so what I do later may be informed or influenced by uh, what I have done with other bodies of work. And so what I, what I hope is that uh, different series will keep developing, uh, you know, more or less concur concurrently. Uh, and I sort of move back and forth. I hope that this different series of work will sort of grow like a tree, as a link, conceptual links with each other. That's the perfect lead into the next question that I had. And I'm <laughs> going to ask Dan this one first and then ask you if you have anything to add. Dan, when I previewed the, the, the show, we walked around it yesterday, I was really struck by the fact that there are two big concept groups here. Mm -hmm. There are the, the beautiful works, um, compelling, startling, that focus on printed material. And then there's the, there's the theater of power um, works at the other end of the room. There's obviously, there are conceptual links. Can you explain why you brought this particular two sets together? I, I think I can. Um, well, a few things to, to consider with all of Schaus's work that ties them uh, together is that uh, virtually all of the works are based on photographs. And the first works, the library series and the museum library series, are photographs that uh, Schauze took. So these are, are images uh, uh, taken on site in situ in these spaces and focus on uh, books or newspapers, the way they were stacked or uh, uh, ordered uh, by uh, librarians or archivists. And the later works that tend to focus more on um, imagery that relates to current events, to uh, political, uh, social activities, uh, are also based on, uh, on media. They're, they're media images. So these are uh, uh, images that uh, Shauza may have taken liberties in terms of how he paints, whether they're quite representational in oil or quite uh, washy uh, and, and more kind of immediate, urgent on the ink and wash. But they're all based on, Im on photographic images, either that he took or that he found. So the images that are uh, of the, from the Theater of Power series, uh, I think of them as the, the works that follow uh, the fragmentary views. Fragmentary views is the name of the series of kind of close-up images of stacks of newspapers. And in those, we see layer upon layer of kind of snippets of photographs and snippets of text um, that tells a story. And um, the, the theater of power is essentially taking one of those images, uh, theoretically, and making it the subject. It's this mediated image of current events that is the point of departure. But I think it's, it's what Shauza does with it that I think makes it uh, most interesting. Do you yeah. want to add anything about how you see the relationship between these two different series, or three different series? Yeah. I. Um as I try to back away from all these works a little bit and try to look at it from a distance, uh, I feel like what, what ties all these works together is uh, the interest in time, in uh, memory, and in history. Either it is a, a brief moment in history, one particular news photo, or it is a, a month's worth of newspaper accumulated over time, or maybe it is um, looking back at the history of student movements over 100 years, or maybe looking at this uh, stack of um, old books, who knows how many uh, uh, the documents, uh, philosophy or history, uh, of who knows how many years, maybe uh, 300, uh, 2,000 years. So there's always this sense of um, uh, contemplating uh, time, the passage of time, and how um, the change in history and politics is documented. Uh, in the uh, in various uh, mediums, uh, 
books or newspapers or you know um, TV um, or the new um, internet media. Mm. You know, one of the things that struck me visually when I walked from one end of the room to the other was that in your pictures, the, the, the images that you present for Theater of Power, it's also multiples. There are many, well, some of them are, are portraits of a single mm -hmm. figure, mm -hmm. but many of them have a whole group, a room full of men. They're all statesmen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's a bit like those stacks of newspaper on top <laughs> of each other. Uh, there are many, many voices in a way, uh, again, mediating information for us. and transmitting power and most of them are holding some kind of paper okay <laughs> so <laughs> I you know I might have gone out, out yeah. on a bit of a limb here and found my own connections uh, but um, clearly you like to work mm -hmm. in on groups of things on yeah. multiple images I think what we are describing uh, uh, points to a, a kind of formal consistency in my work um, you know I'm always um, I always feel like the uh, formal aspect of art Composition, you know, ideas of repetition and you know variation, uh, it's always very important, mm -hmm. and and that's, uh, you know, uh, in the stack of newspaper paintings, you get repetition of these horizontal slices. Uh, in that um, earlier painting of Chinese politician in the 80s, you get these rows of politicians, and uh, you know the pattern formed by by these bright white teacups. <laughs> um, so the, I, I, until you say that, I didn't realize the um, relationship, formal relationship between the two because the subject is so different. Well, thank you for putting the right vocabulary to what I was trying to express. That's exactly it. <laughs> Dad, I wanted to ask you, and actually both of you, we're sitting in front of one of the installation pieces mm -hmm. here, which is a really striking image. Can you talk, just before we, talk, we get to this one in particular, about the mixture of media here in this show? Oh. Yes, actually, well, one of the things that I think is, is uh, uh, most significant about this exhibition is just that. I mean, Shauza has exhibited internationally extensively. He's had many solo shows in the U.S. and abroad, and um, very often the focus has been on really terrific exhibitions, but it may be on one particular series, or it may be uh, a number of media, but all recent work. Mm -hmm. So this exhibition is unique in that it is the first to uh, really look at 15 years of Shauza's work, uh, uh, 93 to 2008, and all of the media and important works from all of the, the major uh, painting series. So uh, in addition to paintings and oil painting, uh, acrylic, uh, oil on we have uh, oil on board? I think we do. Yeah, um, yeah. These so are actually painted oh, this, on wood yeah, board. Yeah, the installation. Yeah. Oh, great. These yes. are uh, oil over acrylic on wood board. <laughs> yes. Oil <laughs> over acrylic on wood board, yes. yes. And I believe I heard you <coughs> say to um, the group of docents here that you deliberately built this up and brought it out from the plane of the wall. Mm -hmm. these, are, mm -hmm. these are on thicker panels than mm -hmm. many yes. of your other works, right? right? Yeah, so back to your question of uh, how, how this p particular piece um, brings together different kind of uh, mediums or, form, or, or forms. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the first, uh, uh, the first thing you'll notice is, okay, it's painting. It's painting that, uh, these are paintings based on photographic images. Uh, and the way these images are painted have a reference to photography, particularly like all his, historical um, documentary uh, photographs. Kind of yeah, photographs? exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, then, uh, besides uh, the piece being paintings, also uh, there's a sense that these are uh, actual objects. Uh, I increase the thickness of the panel to make them mm -hmm. um, prop out from the wall and have the presence of objects. Uh, they are also more architectural with the grid work. Um, I also use a, a, a wood rod, partially painted red, to lean against um, one of the panels to sort of stir up this rigid grid a little bit and uh, to extend into the viewer's space. So that when you look at the piece, I hope that you feel kind of like grab on the flagpole and maybe wave the flag. <laughs> so the whole, the whole piece is transformed into an object. Uh, it, it, it's a real object that exists in, in reality. So I, I think metaphorically, it's um, about the connection between uh, history and present. 
this one really does intrude in a, in a way that comes mm -hmm. out into the third dimension, unlike mm -hmm. some of the others. It's also a great illustration of um, your use of color. There's mm. not much color in the exhibit, except there's a kind of a rich palette for the, the, the painting that shows mm -hmm. a Dürer on the, on the cover, the reference mm -hmm. to the Northern Renaissance painter, and that has kind of lush Northern Ren tones. But other than that, red is the color that primarily mm -hmm. comes up. Mm -hmm. You do that deliberately? Um, yeah, red, red is one of my favorite colors. And of course, <laughs> from my upbringing, you know, red, uh, the meaning of red, I think is just more important than, than how it looks. Um, when you think of red, what, what comes to mind? Um, revolution. Yeah, revolution, <laughs> particularly, um, <laughs> you know, um, China, you know, uh, modern is, China. Is there a hint of um, red lacquer? In there somewhere, also more traditional uh, Chinese art forms. Or? Uh, yeah, this is uh, this red is. Uh, I mean, talking about this uh, uh, intense red on wood, it sometimes does bring to mind um, uh, red lacquer. Mm -hmm. uh, but the red is so harsh. I think has more to do with this kind of intense idealism and uh, vulnerability of uh, young Chinese students at that time during the eighties. In some of your works, you've used a red underlay mm -hmm. and then mostly painted over it, but a little bit of the red hue mm -hmm. comes through from underneath. So mm -hmm. it's suggested as well as very clearly demarcated in mm -hmm. some of your other work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, it's, it's very common that I start a painting with an undercoat of uh, warm red or orange or sometimes yellow. I, I use warm colors more often than cooler colors for the undercoat. And uh, that um, owes much to uh, the study of uh, you know, um, classical European painting. Um, when you look at an um, uh, unfinished painting by Velasquez or Goya, you know, those, those uh, people, they use uh, a warm kind of, usually brownish, not so in intense red, though. But in terms of um, col color theory, uh, warm colors like red and orange orange uh, seems to um, move forward toward the viewer while cooler colors uh, or low-key colors tends to sort of recede in space so when I start when I, I paint an uh, image it's mostly either monochromatic or in low-key colors um, I wanted the red undercoat to bring some kind of uh, uh, liveliness to the work and also uh, sometimes create a sense of urgency, uh, but I, I usually don't want it to be overpronounced. I sometimes underplay it a little so that it's very subtle. But in certain pieces, like there's this um, stack of newspaper, um, you know, Moscow News, um, the pale is black and white and red, and the red is a very intense kind of red. So in that case, I left more of that red undercoat so still. Uh, particularly in the, let the areas where I, I, I painted the letters, and I let the red drips on the edge be more uh, visible as well. It's a wonderful um, way of catching the, the viewer's eye as you approach the painting. Mm -hmm. What's on the edge, those drips, mm -hmm. draw you towards the work. It's, okay, it's, I'm glad you yeah. noticed those yeah, yeah, details. Yeah, it's very effective. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I want to review the, the painting process to give a hint of mm -hmm. uh, the, the working process, a hint that these are... Um, handmade images, you know, they are constructed. So you are aware of the, the process. That's a great juxtaposition because the surface of most of your paintings are so incredibly um, mm. detailed and fine and mm. they're so so finished looking in every way yeah. <laughs> that having a little bit of the process show on the edge mm -hmm. is actually a really useful reminder that there is an artist working by hand on those surfaces. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I have a That's question good. for Dan, yeah. one more. I want to throw you another, mm -hmm. another conceptual question about the, the construction of the show. You've yes. called it amplified moments. Mm -hmm. And I understand the most obvious level of that. Of course, we've got these wonderful blow-ups of printed materials. Mm -hmm. What else did you mean by amplified moments? Well. Um, I guess uh, if we if we look at many of the media images besides the the uh, the scale increase that you mentioned, uh, I think what comes with that and mm -hmm. and the way Shaoza paints, I think he paints in a way that makes you want to look and look and look more. That um, um, it it really makes the images resonate and gives them a a power 
And um, I think if we look at all of the work collectively as well as individually, it, it, um, it really uh, uh, stands as this, this kind of uh, slow building one on the other on the other to create this sort of powerful body of work. And it really, I think, has an amplifying aspect to it. Getting them all in the same room together and having them yes. talk to each other? Yes. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think it uh, also it refers to the, the <coughs> different moments in my career, different kind of series, um, and also, I mean, specifically to the newspaper paintings. Uh, I think the phrase was from a um, an, an interview I had with uh, um, a writer uh, for New York Times. So uh, when he visited my studio in 2004, um, and um, we talk about the paintings of newspapers, I say something like, um, uh, well, these are amplified moments. <laughs> I'll talk about these slices of newspapers. Mm -hmm. uh, well, for obvi obvious level, um, each slice is actually pretty big. They're, they're, they're uh, enlarged or, or amplified. Yes. Yeah, some so it refers to the, the theme, again, refers back to the theme of, of time, you mm -hmm. know, of mm -hmm. uh, memory and history. Which I think is a perfect title for the show. Yeah. And there are a few things uh, that I think for uh, viewers who haven't seen the objects are worth realizing is that the images of newspaper details may be based on, uh, 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 in real life, this much space. But the paintings, uh, uh, the largest paintings, are 10 feet and more wide. There is this you know, incredible expanse or amplification. And part of what I think is um, uh, worth considering uh, when looking at them is that there's only a certain amount of information on that source image. Uh, mm -hmm. So Shauza really has to jump in and find things that aren't always there in terms of details or uh, really kind of work with and expand upon what is a, a, a very modest uh, image. And, and kind of amplify this idea in scale and in, in terms of um, information, frankly. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it is challenging to uh, try to make a, a very small fragment uh, of a news photo look um, credible and, and you know, reach you know, larger, much larger scale painting. Um, and plus, uh, when we have the folds of the newspaper, when I took the source image, uh, certain parts will always fall out of focus. And sometimes that becomes an advantage. I can paint those looser or make it more abstract. Um, other times, uh, I need more information. They need to be more specific. So then I may, be, I may, I may need to refer to a, a, a detailed shot of that stack. So usually when I uh, visit libraries and, make, and take source photos, I would take um, many. I'll take maybe five uh, of the same stack, slightly different angles, closer up, you know, uh, detail shots, uh, so that I make sure that I can, um, I have all the information I need to make it a uh, five by seven feet painting. I saw you walking through the gallery with your digital camera in your hand and just snapping away, taking photographs <laughs> even of our set here. It's become a habit. <laughs> I was going to ask you, do you process your world through your camera to some extent? Pretty much so, you know. I, <laughs> <laughs> uh, on my blog, I post a lot of pictures. <laughs> it's sort of a visual diary, so to speak. I wanted to ask you before we have to close to make a few comments about the video installation at the mm. end of the gallery. It's mm. a separate space. Um, a very dark space on which there are images projected on a surface of the mm. ends of books. Mm -hmm. Would you talk about that one a little bit? Um, yeah, uh, the, that video installation uh, plus this um, group of uh, photographs, color photographs of books flying in the air, uh, they were all inspired by um, burning of books. Uh, I, when I watched the, uh, uh, a documentary film about Nazi Germany, I was fascinated by the scenes of book burning. Uh, like at night, you saw these huge fire stacks with um, books being thrown into that fire stack. Mm -hmm. And so in the video, um, a, um, a book or several books uh, would appear like a little light dots flying through dark space. I think it's a, a very poetic, uh, besides being a horrific uh, kind of imagery. 
Um, and I always have that scene in mind. I, uh, so I wanted to uh, recreate um, images of books uh, flying in the air, uh, illuminated or maybe threatened by the light of flame coming from underneath. Uh, but I don't want it to be, be just very specific about book burning, it's more about the past, you know, um, how ideas, uh, maybe memory or philosophy uh, is being tested over time and uh, tested uh, through the extension of time and space. So that's, I think, what, what these uh, works are about. It's about a 12-minute video, I believe, 12 minutes and yeah. a few mm -hmm. seconds. Mm -hmm. And it has a... It's got a it's got a kind of a haunting beauty to it. So mm -hmm. it's not just about destruction. It's also about the, mm -hmm. the maybe about the tenacity of those ideas, even mm -hmm. if we burn the materials that contain them. Right. I, I think this. I've, I'm interested in the contradiction between uh, the content and uh, you know its uh, uh, and beauty. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, I, I've been thinking a lot about the relationship between uh, politics and aesthetics. Um, into if you want to create, a, make a work that um, carries a message or have a, a meaning or hopefully uh, have uh, an impact on real life, does it mean that this work um, would be, uh, you know, dry and conceptual and just, you know, uh, be deprived of aesthetic uh, qualities? Um, in another word, I, I remember this question of uh, Adorno. Uh, it's is poetry still possible after Auschwitz? And uh, is so poetry still possible after Auschwitz? Yeah. Yes. So Adorno's big question. Yeah. Adorno. Adorno says something like, you know, <laughs> writing poetry after Auschwitz is barbaric. Uh, so I think that what that means. Uh, I'm not going to go in depth into the context in which he says <laughs> that, but uh, I think to me it, it pretty much means that uh, is beauty or aesthetics still possible? in the face of cruel reality. Yeah, well said. I'm going to answer that question and say, your show would say yes. <laughs> and I'm going to wrap it up so. because we're out of time. So I would have loved to have given you another half hour just to uh, elaborate on that particular <laughs> philosophy. Thank you both very much for doing this. Uh, I encourage you. everybody who sees the show to mm. come and see this. It's very difficult to imagine without being in the room. Good luck with this. Thank you, Barbara. Yeah, thank, thank you, you Barbara. Dan. We've been speaking with artist Xiao Zhe Xie and Dan Mills, curator of Amplified Moments, 1993 to 2008. The exhibit is on view at the Jordan Schnitzer Museum of Art until December 31st, 2011. Thanks for watching. <laughs>